over the edge Feel like I'm floating through the air The pain I felt is paid for All is said and done What is going on you guys? It's your boy, Captain Jack Spiro. Thanks again for tuning in this week. On one of my recent videos, I did a comparison between the pole spear and the Hawaiian sling. I got a huge reaction on the Hawaiian sling I was using. I was using a custom made one that I made personally, and I kind of tweaked it, did different things to it, depending on what I actually liked. And I'm going to show you guys this spear, but I'm also going to take you on a little adventure. We're gonna go on a little mission, slay it, and I'm gonna use just my Hawaiian sling, my custom one that I made, so you guys can see it in action. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little rough overview of what I'm using. This right here is my Headhunter Predator, and I'm gonna bring that for Matt in case he wanted to try to you know rock that, use it a little bit. But this is the thing I was using in that video. Really, the only difficult thing to get my hands on was the shaft. The shaft is tethered. It has 400 pound mono that I have attached to the little slide ring, and the slide ring stops on the back of the spear. And you can get this. They, I know Headhunter makes them. Uh, you can maybe look for them online, uh, but I'll try to find them and I will link them in the description below. It's a standard wooden dowel Hawaiian sling. And the reason I do this cable is so it kind of bungees out and stays out of my way whenever I'm going after a fish. A lot of times I tried to hook just the line straight up to the little slide ring and that was a disaster. The line would get all bunched up, uh, it would get tangled and caught on things, but with the mono, the mono doesn't get really caught and tangled or anything like that. So I have about six feet of extra line and it just tethers out there and just hangs out there. You'll see in some of my videos. And the way I did the real uh, shout out exhale spear fishing, my boy Eric really hooked it up. We got little screws and I got the smallest reel I could find and screwed it into the wooden dowel. And actually what I did is originally I didn't have this little front piece and the problem I was running into was it kept getting wrapped on itself no matter what reel it was this thing whenever I shot something big it would wrap around itself and then I would have to hook off my belt reel onto this uh, bungee and let my spear go and that was just a big hassle but yeah this is what I'm rocking with you guys will see it in action I'm gonna take it out maybe shoot some sheep's head maybe Kubera this thing seriously has slayed some fish. I will see you guys in a couple minutes out there on the water with my boys slaying it up. All right, you guys, so we're out on the boat. We got Dylan, Matt, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, do some inshore slaying. No way we're taking this offshore. It is blowing like crazy. Hopefully we get into some fish and I'll get to show you guys that little sling that I'm using. All right, you guys, so when I first got down there, I wanted to see what the current was like and I ended up seeing this cool little thing and some kind of unusual I seen a couple of nurse sharks with their heads faced under that rock kind of looked like they were making out a little bit we didn't see a whole lot on this dive but I did see Matt go over there use the pole spear and land a little porgy and they're absolutely really good eating so he at least got a little bit for dinner so since I'm using this primitive Hawaiian sling, I kind of want to show you guys my makes and my misses. So I think that on this dive, I might have missed one or two, and you'll see there's kind of a learning curve to it. I kind of shot a little bit behind it, and especially when they're kind of scared and frantic like that, they usually take off. But the good thing about this spear is you can reload it on multiple dives. There's some times where I'm down there and I reload it three or four times missing fish. You can see Matt kind of snuck that one in there. It was a really cool perspective that I had. And he landed a, well, actually our first sheep's head of the day. And it was a really nice size. Now on this dive, you guys get to see the Hawaiian sling in action. 
I kind of go down there nice and relaxed, let the current take me, making sure my tethered mono is off on the side, and I see a big school of fish, and I had a really good feeling it was sheep's head, and sure enough, it was. You can see I'm taking my time trying to pick out the biggest one. Landed a good shot. It kind of fooled me because I almost thought I spined him, but I didn't. He had a decent amount of life left. But that is my first fish with the Hawaiian sling in the box. You can see how it loads nice and easy. Super easy to do underwater even if you are in a panic. So this dive is really cool. It's kind of a long one. I'm just drifting across the bottom. I kind of see some little bit of sea life. I'm making sure that tether line is not getting caught on any reef. I'm making sure I'm really cautious of that. I see a nice little baby hogfish there, which was kind of cool to see. And I end up taking a really far shot on this sheep's head coming up. And you guys need to make sure you pay attention. I slow it down a little bit for you, but you can see how much I lead the fish because I know the spear has some time to catch up to the fish. And that used almost all of my shooting line. You'll get a little slow-mo pick right now. You can see how far in front and above I'm aiming and you just see the fish meet up and you can kind of see him starting to wiggle and swim, but it was just not enough to get away from the good old trusty Hawaiian sling. So this dive, you can really take a lot out of it. You will see me shoot and miss and also reload and shoot again and actually land the fish. One of the best things you can take is that make sure you're keeping track of my eyes. I never really lose sight of the fish. I make sure I keep him in sight even if I miss him. You can kind of see me kind of using this boulder as protection. Get a shot and he turned right. I was leading him a little bit too much. He wasn't really spooked so I should have known. But I kind of kept him in my peripherals. Was able to reload, look down real quick, keep my eye on him. Now even the GoPro can't see it, but I had my eyes on the fish the whole time. I was able to reload and get another shot. And that's one huge advantage to the Hawaiian sling is being able to quickly reload multiple times on one dive, making sure you're able to land fish. One of the main downsides though is that you don't have the range and the punch that a spear gun has. So like I said before, I really wanted to show you guys my misses and you can see how close I am to getting these fish, but it's just that little extra movement that that fish has to juke the spear. And when you start using Hawaiian slings, you really have to anticipate the fish a little bit better, kind of guess what direction they're moving, how fast they're going. And this kind of was a Hail Mary. You could see me leading the fish, but it just wasn't quite right and I didn't get the shot on that guy. Now on this dive, you guys will be so impressed, I shoot an absolute monster and you will see in this clip what I'm talking about. Dude, I shot a monster. I shot a monster, bro. I shot a monster. <laughs> that monster, dude. That monster. Dude, people. Or I'll have to clean up after you and hone in my skills. So now we got Dylan in the water. We're diving a new area. You can see there's some serious structure in this area. Dylan does a little swim through, through these columns, looking for some Kubera, some snapper, kind of anything he can find. On this dive, you guys can see a new way that you can use the Hawaiian sling. I'm looking around for fish and the viz isn't that great, so I don't really have that full bow and arrow length stride where I can pull the Hawaiian sling back. So what I do is I pull the spear back and I pinch it with one of my hands and you can see how I use it in this clip. I kind of shoot the spear out of it by letting go, almost turn it into a pole spear. I don't have as much power, but it's something you can do if you have no other option. Something funny here, I kind of strung up the fish on my shooting line which caused me to miss that snapper. And also, I think he kind of juked me a little bit. 
in doing so, I turned around and saw that my sheep's head fell off my mono line and I had to go back and pick him up. So this is a prime example of why buddy diving is so important. I saw that Dylan was kind of after something. I went to help him if he needed any help and I saw that he shot a Kubera. He's doing an extraction dive real quick, gets a hold of the Kubera, but he runs into an issue and you'll see exactly what happens. He goes to pull his gun out through this hole, but it got stuck. So he had to let the Kubera go. I was able to get my hands on him and he was hanging on by just a thread. I get my knife out in case I need to brain him. But I looked at the shot, I was like, shoot, I can just take this thing out of the cheek right here. I have a really good grip on the fish, so I do so. And then I see my Hawaiian sling there, and I use it to brain the fish. So the Hawaiian sling can also be used to brain fish. After this, we were pretty stoked because this was Dylan's first Kubera, and I was happy I was able to be a part of the experience. We're slaying him. Dylan just got a nice little cubie. Matt caught this yesterday, so don't let him pull you. <laughs> he caught it on the uh, on hook and line. <laughs> we slayed via diving. Now Maddie's here, going to try to shoot for some triple tail. Fishing some buoys here. You catch that big black drum. So no uh, no fish on the buoys. But we're going to head in and I'll see you guys back at the dock. Sick little adventure with the boys. I'm super pumped. Dylan got his first Kubera. Yeah, made it happen. And I'm super pumped that Matt was able to take the pole spear and get it done. I was pretty proud. That was, uh, it's nice. And I highly suggest always, if you're diving something where you know there's going to be fish and you get a lot of them, try to mix it up a little bit and shoot primitive spears. And whether it's a Hawaiian sling, pole spear, three prong, just mix it up, do something a little bit different just so you're a good all around diver, hunter, spear fisherman. And I'm telling you, whenever I shoot and miss a fish with my Hawaiian sling, it makes me a better hunter because I have to hold my breath longer and get down there, reload, do it again, all on one breath and being able to land the fish. It's kind of a nice feat being able to do that with the primitive gear. And I also hope you guys liked the little uh, intro and showing you guys my Hawaiian sling setup. That thing is pretty sweet. I went by no instructions at all. I just did it, tried it, kept failing, brought it back to the drawing board and made sure I had a pretty sweet setup. And now, I mean, I love it. If you guys like this episode, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you're new, think about subscribing and I'll see you guys next week for another adventure. Later.